Horite Appraisers. This is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers. And in this video, we are excited to show you our first sneak peek into our adjustment support tool that we're building. Not quite in a usable state yet, but we wanted to go ahead and show you some things. Now, I'm going to try not to get too deep into details. Just a couple of things. This tool gives you full control over the calculations, over the methods, over the settings, and over the data. So you decide what data you want to upload to it, and you can upload multiple data sets. It crunches the data based on your choices and your settings, and it provides you a very thorough work file that shows exactly how everything was calculated, nothing hidden, no black box part to this. And it also is not a magical tool that just tells you what the adjustment should be. We think you're the important part of the equation here. So this tool will give you the results from a, a ton of calculations on a whole bunch of different appraisal methods over multiple data sets on many different kinds of property features. It will give you those results and let you opine on them. So you form an opinion based on the results. You tell it what results you think are ridiculous and you don't wanna place any weight or consideration on them. And you just tell it what you wanna focus on and what your opinion is. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Hopefully that's enough to get us started. I'm gonna go ahead and start a session. By the way, you can load up existing sessions. So anytime you do anything in this tool, it is automatically saved and you can get right back to where you were if you happen to close it out or you, your computer locks up or whatever. So let's go ahead and start a session up. And we can load in our data sets now and you can customize these data set names. For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and load in my data sets. Now I'm going to use three. These can be any data sets that you want and it can be anywhere from one, two, or three. You absolutely do not have to use all three data sets for this to work. I like to use three, so that's what I'm going to do. And then you're going to notice up in the top left, there's also a transactional adjustment settings button. I believe this is going to be one of the only tools or maybe the only tool that properly handles transactional adjustments. Transactional adjustments are things you're supposed to take care of before you start calculating property feature adjustments. So transactional settings, just to give you an idea, you control property rights, like how you're going to adjust for or account for differences in property rights, for differences in types of financing, for seller concessions, for market condition adjustments, AKA time adjustments, for distressed sales. Those things are called transactional adjustments. You have full control over those are handled or not handled here. I'm gonna go ahead and click done. It's gonna ask me a couple more things, which are details about my subject property that it needs in order to properly calculate depreciated cost. Let's go ahead and get those entered in there. All right, that's done. Now we're gonna wait, and in this five to six seconds here, it's gonna go ahead and calculate all the those different adjustment methods on all the different features I have here on three different data sets. So that was quite a bit of number crunching that it did there to give you results on whatever methods, whatever features you wanted to calculate. And so now at this point, I can go in here and I can kind of get rid of anything I don't really want to place weight or consideration on. For example, these really low numbers here. I just want to kind of cut those out. And these are kind of high, so let's get rid of those. And now I'm going to go ahead and actually maybe just constrain out those. And by constraining, I'm basically telling the tool I do not want to place any weight or consideration on these or the ones that I snipped out with the snipping tool there. And then I'm just going to say, all right, line up my line with whatever I want to call the adjustment here. I'm going to say $3 a square foot. Keep in mind, this is an alpha product. So you will see some weird funky little things uh, like you just saw there with $3 and one cent that won't be in there in the final product. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with GLA. Let's get rid of some of that. All right, and we'll get rid of some of the highs there that don't need to be there. Now I still want to constrain out those and I'm gonna give all the rest of these here kind of weight and consideration. I'm gonna call it $60. Now you're gonna to wanna to have a reasoning to choose that $60. We're gonna have a whole lot of charts you can look at to determine whether there's a correlation with regression. We're gonna have R squared, standard deviation, visuals for all the different methods. As I said, we are gonna have other methods in here that you can't see yet, but by the final, final product, we'll have other things like grouped data, allocation. We'll have methods based on the income approach that you can use in here. So now I'm happy with 60. I'm gonna use that, mark it done. I'm gonna go ahead and skip full bath for a minute because it's looking a little weird to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and do bedrooms. Now I'm gonna cut out those. And I know that in this area, 
I am not going to make a bedroom adjustment. So I'm going to call it zero and I have support for that. So I'm going to lock that in. Now I told you I'm going to skip bathrooms because I was expecting my bathroom adjustment to be somewhere between maybe five or seven thousand dollars. And I have depreciated costs, which is a little over seven thousand, but not quite down to seven and nothing else there. It doesn't look quite right to me. We have another what I consider very powerful tool in here, which is modeling. So what that means is I can essentially adjust all of the sales that are being utilized in this full bath adjustment or garage or whatever. I can adjust those to the subject property based on $60 a square foot or $3 a square foot or zero bedroom adjustment or whatever it is. So if I'm really confident in this $60 a square foot, I can just simply model that, click yes. And now it's going to model that to both my full bath adjustment and garage spaces. And so you can see here, my regression actually dialed in and it looks a little bit nicer here because now GLA has been accounted for and I could do the same thing with lot size. I can model that. And that'll mean that it's gonna adjust all those properties to my subject based on $3 a square foot. So if you're confident in your adjustments, do that. And it should help things tighten up. All right, so now I'm just gonna go and remove the really high points there and the zero, I just wanna get rid of that. And now I'm probably just gonna constrain that, constrain that and only place weight on the methods here. So now I have basically either $6,000 or 7,000 is probably a good number to use. I'm just gonna go with 7,000 for now. And I'm happy with that. And I have support based on, it looks like three different types of regression and depreciated cost. And you can see over here for GLA, I had support based on many different methods in here, both several, several from regression, I got sensitivity, two paired sales, and depreciated costs that are kind of all supporting my $60 a square foot adjustment there. Again, same thing with lot size, bedrooms, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and move on down to garage. I'm gonna get rid of anything that seems kind of ridiculously high there, which we all know that's gonna happen. I'm sure many of you have used regression and you get crazy results sometimes. That is gonna happen once in a while, but our goal here with this tool is we wanted to provide as many different adjustment methods as possible and calculate them accurately. Plus, if we can include modeling to help further tighten things up, we think that even though you're going to get some wacky results sometimes, the odds are that you're gonna have at least a few methods that support your choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and constrain those, move this in, and I'm gonna call my garage adjustment $6,000. All right, and I'm happy. I'm gonna go ahead and mark full bath is done. And let's just say I also wanted to add a swimming pool adjustment. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit done. And now I've got swimming pool in there. I can go ahead and decide if I want to, what I wanna call it. Maybe block these out and block these out and probably just go with, whoops, not 1200, 12,000 and be happy with that. And I have a few different types of regression there that are supporting that. I could even, if I want to constrain those ones out that are a little high and I'm happy. And now of course, I went through this fairly quickly. You may need to take a little more time because you might want to decide, okay, I'm using $3. I've got a whole, I've got a big range here from two to six or from $1.50 to $5.50. I need to know exactly what's the best way to decide on that number. Now it could be it's where most items are grouped up, or I'm sorry, where most methods are grouped up. It could be that one method tends to work best for a certain feature in a particular neighborhood that you're in. So maybe a certain type of regression. In the final tool, you're gonna to be able to hover over these dots and see the, the actual details of those dots, what type of regression it is, what the R squared or standard deviation is, that kind of thing. And there are other ways that you may wanna decide whether it's the right adjustment. For example, just go and plug that number into your sales comparison approach in your actual report and see what it happens. Do your comps adjust closer together? If so, that's probably a good adjustment to use and you have plenty of support for it. And the point of all that is basically that, as you saw, I can very quickly, but also very accurately, get support using multiple appraisal methods on multiple sets of data for whatever features I'm interested in getting support for. And I went in here and I did it. And of course, I went a little quicker because I already kind of knew what my adjustments might be for these six particular features, but that might be the case for you a lot of times as well. It may take a little bit longer if you're getting an adjustment for something you've never tried to get an adjustment for, but essentially in the span of a few minutes, you should be able to load in your data and get full support for that, including support not only in your work file, but that you can load right into your report. 
And then finally, all that data, all the support is going to go into your digital work file. So I can hit export here and it's going to give me a whole bunch of documentation, details on the formulas for regression, how paired sales was run. It'll even give you documents showing every single matched pair. So you can see, okay, it matched up this MLS number with this MLS number. And you can go and verify for yourself that that actually is a matched pair. And on top of that, this tool gives you a ton of customizability and control. So you actually can go in and decide how depreciated cost is run. All the different settings regarding depreciation, regarding quality, all of that stuff you have full control over. With paired sales, you get to decide what actually is a pair. Does the GLA have to match exactly, or am I gonna have a little tolerance, maybe of 5% or 50 square feet or 100 square feet? You are in full control of that. And then finally, all that data, all that support goes into your work file. So I can click export, get all that data into a work file, and it also includes documentation I might want to actually include into my report. So just to give you an idea, we've got this document here that it will provide you, where it just shows the feature that you were analyzing, it shows exactly what methods you placed weight on, and the numerical results of each of those methods right here on this line. It does that for every feature you analyzed. This is something you could just attach right to your appraisal report to show that you did the work. It even shows transactional adjustment information. I think this would be something that would be great support for what you did to include in your appraisal report. Another thing you could include is this document. So we have customizable comments. You can have these comments created however you like, either more detailed than this, less detailed than this. For every feature that you determine what the adjustment is, it'll load comments in to this PDF. You can either attach that PDF to your report, or you can just copy and paste the comments as you'd like them. All right, and then the other thing that I think appraisers might find valuable is this document, which essentially is a two-page document showing every single method that was used and a brief explanation of that method. Now, this is not a detailed explanation. It doesn't give any formulas or math. It's just something that your client, the reader of your report, may be interested in knowing as far as what each of those methods means if you're gonna be using those terms in your actual appraisal report. All right, and then lastly, of course, it has a very detailed work file that it will provide for you that has details on each of those methods, exactly how the transactional adjustments were calculated, what your settings were, how depreciated costs was calculated, paired sales, all that stuff. So you have really good information if you ever needed to go in and replicate the data or defend yourself with it. All right, I think that's it. Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you like it and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.